Hi, this is Charlie Christensen with a quick video on practicing. In this video, I'll discuss some tips and tricks for your practicing and a brief survey of some of the most recent findings and thinking on how we learn and how we build muscle memory. The first thing to consider is motivation. Even if you practice a lot, sometimes you just don't feel like practicing. There have been a lot of studies that have looked at motivation in a number of different fields. One that is probably most relevant is working out. So what encourages you to get up in the morning and go to the gym? When it comes to learning new things, uh, which is what practicing is really focused on, there can be kind of two different mindsets. Uh, and those are fixed, fixed mindset versus growth mindset. In fixed mindset, we see our own intelligence and our own ability as fixed. So it's something we're born with or it's something that we get at a very young age. Um, so we're smart in some things, we're talented at some things, but not at others. The other mindset is growth mindset. And this is really saying that uh, you can do anything if you put your mind to it. Um, one of my favorite quotes is, nothing is hard, it's just unfamiliar. And that kind of goes along with this growth mindset. And the studies that they've done have broken it down into, uh, oh, you're really smart at that, or oh, you worked really hard at that. If you have a fixed mindset, most of all, you're going to want validation for the things that you're really good at. Uh, if you have a growth mindset, you're really mostly just going to focus on the things that you're not so good at. People who have a growth mindset are intrinsically more motivated to practice. Um, they practice for longer periods of time, they find more to practice, they don't really have to think as hard about what to practice, and they show more results from their practicing. Involved in this idea of motivation is the idea of habit. Uh, we have a lot of habits that we do all day long. So think about you come home from school or work and you habitually look at the fridge and see what you're going to have for dinner. If we can make practicing a habit, so saying you get up in the morning, uh, you eat breakfast, and then you sit down and play through some scales, or you warm up your head voice. If you're not having to think about it all the time, what am I going to do, or should I go do that? You're making these decisions. You're actually wasting a little bit of energy just kind of like doing that either or, should I or shouldn't I? One of the terms that pops up a lot in the literature around practicing is deliberate or mindful practicing. And uh, the opposite of mindful practicing would obviously be mindless practicing. So that's the idea of just going through the motions or just grinding away, um, just trying to build that muscle memory. And we can balance those two things out with mindless practicing really being a little bit better for muscle memory, where mindful practicing is better for connecting the dots and a more generalized kind of improvement. To talk about mindful practicing a little bit more, what you're really doing when you're mindfully practicing is practicing with a purpose. You're not just singing through a tune or playing through a song. Uh, you're really practicing to, to, to reach some sort of goal, whether that's to play, th play through the phrases more smoothly or develop a technical thing that you're working on or to get all the words right or to convey a really specific emotion. You're really practicing with a goal in mind and you're constantly assessing how that's going and adjusting your practice. So that if it's going really well, maybe you're taking larger so chunks of the song at a time or larger sections of the song at a time, or maybe you're going at a faster tempo. And if things are not going as well, you, you have a lower success rate based on your goals. Maybe you're going slower or you're taking a smaller section. This is what we think of as quality practice versus quantity. And a lot of times when people practice for really long chunks of time or they practice a lot in any day, uh, it's really hard to maintain this mindful practice. And so uh, you find yourself slipping into after that first hour or after that second hour or even after that first 15 minutes, you find yourself slipping into thinking about other things or daydreaming or just completely zoning out while going through the motions. And quality generally beats quantity. Um, so a little bit of this mindful practicing will go a long way. When you're planning a practice session, or even when you're just thinking about your to-do list, there's kind of two different ways that you can approach what you have to practice. And those are blocked and random. Um, blocked feels like the more traditional way that we might practice things. So that you're going from the start to end of everything. 
You can think about that in the course of a song, or you can think about that in the course of an entire practice session. In a song, it might mean that you start at bar one and go to the end, and then start over again. Uh, in a practice session, it might mean that you always start with certain exercises, you always go through a certain sequence of songs. Um, if you're planning a concert or a recital, maybe you are always going through the set list in the same order. Uh, random, random selection is obviously random. So in the case of just one song, maybe you're taking different sections of the song and working on them in a random sequence. So here's the ending part, here's the middle part, here's a later part, here's the beginning part. Um, or if you're looking at a whole, a whole list of songs, uh, every time you practice, you're kind of going in a completely different order. You're always starting with something else. Block practicing seems to have an advantage for muscle memory. So if you really want to be able to go on the rails and not have to think too much about it. So these people that do shows, the same show, over and over and over again, you kind of get to the point where you don't have to think about it. You can kind of just go through the motions. Random is better for maintaining information and learning more things and, and building a broader skill base that's more translated to other things. Uh, it's better for retention. So if you're looking to memorize some lyrics, you're much better off jumping around. Even though you'll have less success in the, in the current time when you're practicing, you'll feel like you're kind of getting uh, less out of it. In the long run, you're actually much better at retention if you do that. Related is the concept of changing conditions. Studies have shown that changing the conditions of practicing can actually help retention. The conditions of practicing might include where, what, and how you practice. So that if you're used to practicing at your house in the morning, practicing at the studio during the evening can actually help retention. Now, most of us have pretty fixed schedules, so sometimes this can be hard. While we're also trying to build the habit of practicing, it can be hard to mix it up. But even just small changes in the conditions that we normally have for practicing can show long-term gains in our skill building and in our retention. You've probably heard some form of the phrase, we learn from our mistakes. So the question is, how much do we learn from errors when we're practicing? Studies have shown that beginners actually learn less from errors in their practicing, while experts learn more from the errors in their practicing. This probably correlates to the idea that beginners probably have less of a concept of if they're making an error in the first place. So how do you figure all this out? I think the key to this, especially at the beginning, is to record your practicing. That's one surefire way, or at least a higher percentage way, of knowing that you're making an error in the first place. I think the trick can be not practicing our errors. So now repeating our errors over and over and over again so that they become an inherent part of our performance. Along those same lines, recording our practice allows us to self-assess and reflect. Dewey said that we haven't learned something from an experience until we've reflected on it. And so until you can connect those dots and complete the circle, asking yourself those tough questions, what did I learn? Am I achieving my goals? what's next, it's really hard to move on, and we're also not getting the most out of our practice. If you're watching this video, my bet is you've already done a fair bit of practicing. You can't get to the collegiate level as a musician or the professional level as a musician without having practiced a lot. But before thinking about how you might make your practicing better and more efficient, consider how you're practicing now. So what do you normally practice? When? How? Where do you normally practice? And maybe most importantly, why do you practice? Many of us started practicing because we had to. Or we started practicing because we just loved playing music. And maybe we didn't even think about it as practicing at the time. We just thought about it as playing. So consider those reasons throughout your whole life that you've practiced and how you've practiced to come up with the next step. I'll pause for a moment to consider the concepts of playing versus practicing. Practicing seems like hard work, and we do it to get better at playing, which is fun. But playing can also feed into our practicing and make practicing more fun and actually make us better practicers. So consider adding a little bit of time into that practice session to simply play. So mess around, improvise, play something that's really easy that you feel really good about. You'll actually get more out of your practice session that way. 
In summary, to get the most out of your practicing, be mindful and present, change things up, self-assess and reflect, and have fun. If you do those things, your intention will increase and your skills will build at a faster rate. Thanks for watching. someone happy make just one someone happy make just one face to face you